Matrix and Roadshow fans, we are back with another video and we're going to be talking about Ahsoka. Now, the two episode premiere came out on Disney Plus last night and uh, the first episode was like a 56 minutes and I believe that the next episode was like a 44 minutes. So we're going to be going into that, talking about this show, giving you my thoughts on the show and I'm going to say right off the bat. By Disney Star Wars standards, this is good. It is good by Disney Star Wars standards. It wasn't great. It was not a great show, but it's way better than Andor to me, at least the first two episodes so far. I know a lot of people like Andor. Andor really wasn't my uh, cup of tea. It was way better than uh, Obi-Wan. It was way, way better than the Book of Boba Fett. But still... There were some flaws in the first two episodes of this show. And it's called Ahsoka, but guys, they focus a whole bunch on Sabine. That's why I believe this is truly a um, sequel to um, to Rebels. I truly do believe that. Now, cinematically, man, this look like it should actually have been in a movie theater. I mean, you can tell that they actually put effort into making this actually look and feel more like a movie. When you watch like a uh, Boba Fett, Boba Fett felt like it was really, really cheap. It did. I don't think they were using the volume. I know the volume was kind of a thing with um, the first two seasons of um, The Mandalorian. But in this case right here, it looked like it was actually made for a movie theater. Now, Dave Filoni, he directed the uh, the first episode. And the first episode is definitely the stronger of the two. And uh, I believe this is um, Dave Filoni's what, second or third live action directing. Because I didn't know that he actually did ep direct some episodes of um, Ahsoka in The Mandalorian. So right here on Disney Plus, you got two episodes right here. And uh, episode one, it is 57 minutes. So I was pretty close. And episode two is 44 minutes. But. That's actually with credits and stuff like that. So the episodes are a little bit uh, shorter than that. Now. I do have a problem with some of the choices here when it actually came to the show. In episode one, when they introduced Sabine. And by the way, guys, for actually getting in that, a lot of what you actually saw in the trailers were actually stuff from like the first episode for the most part. OK. Um, Sabine, she's on Lethal, and when you actually see her, she's riding on um, the speeder. And Kevin Connor is the composer of the show. Same guy from Clone Wars, same guy from uh, Rebels. His score was good, but the musical choice that they put out there to introduce Sabine was so un Star Wars like. It was punk rock music. Yeah, I'm not making it up. It was punk rock music. I was like, what the hell? This does not fit Star Wars whatsoever. I believe they did some of that stuff in um in Book of Boba Fett also. I believe like the guy with the um I know I don't think it was punk rock music, but the guy with the dreads that was actually fit, fitting up um um I can't remember who it was one of the people, I don't know, but the music did not fit. In Disney Star Wars, they've, they've had a little bit of a track record now. Putting in like like these rock kind of vibe things in there and it doesn't fit. It does not fit whatsoever. So that was a major, major, major turn off for me right there when it actually um, came to that. Um, also, I would actually say these first two episodes were a bit slow. It was a bit slow. There was some action now. Um, Balin. I like Balin. Balin Skull, I do like him. His apprentice is uh, Shin. Now, I'm actually curious, though, guys, if um, Shin actually uses the force or she's just more of an assassin like um, like Grievous, for example. Because I don't think we actually see her use the force. And uh, she does call Balin master. 
but also Sabine calls um, Ahsoka Master, and I got a bit of a problem uh, with the Master and Apprentice thing, because that's actually the name of the first episode, by the way. I don't think we see Shin use the Force. But uh, Balin, I'm curious about his angle. He is an a survivor of Order 66. That's a bit of a problem here because we're like um, in the same time period as um, like Mandalorian, I believe season three is what um, Filoni actually said. Too many people surviving Order 66 undermines the original trilogy. Because when Yoda said, when I'm gone, the last of the Jedi will you be. Ahsoka's around, and now you got um, Balin around also as well. And, you know, Disney Star Wars has done this. They, they've done this, and it's a bit annoying. Uh, Dave Filoni, he trained under George Lucas, he knows, but still George is not in control. He's not in control right now. So when you actually see, like, the first two episodes being kind of, like, very female-focused, it's because... If you did not watch Rebels, you wouldn't know that um, Ezra has, he's away. They don't even know if he's really alive right now. And also Kanan, he died. Now, they could have brought in Zeb. Zeb does not make a, an appearance in this. Or Callus. They don't make an appearance. Uh, Hera is in this. And I got to be honest, man. Mary Elizabeth Winstead is Hera so far in the first two episodes. I'm not feeling her as Hera. I'm not feeling her as Hera. The Hera and Rebel show, I like way better better than the live action version of Hera. A lot of the people in um, the first two episodes, they're just kind of, they're just miserable people, it seems. The acting comes off, you got a lot of people just kind of like staring and everything. Uh, like Shin. Shin, for example, the apprentice to uh, Balin. She has this look on her face like. Like this, like the whole time, she doesn't really say much at all. And. I guess that's kind of a trend in Disney Star Wars. It is. So if you guys seen it and you felt the same way, you know, let let me know that in the comments section below. OK, now, I don't think I've gotten into any spoilers here, but now I'm going to kind of get into um some spoilers here. So now you have been warned. I don't know what it is, man, about Disney Star Wars. Maybe they're just fresh out of ideas. But the first episode. Is about finding a map. Where have we seen that before? Finding a map. This map is going to uh, lead to um, where where Thrawn is and possibly Ezra. So. It's that whole track of, you know, kind of repeating things that we've already seen before. Um, lightsaber battles um, right at the beginning. Balin's goal. Take from the trailer. It looks like uh, Darth Vader in a uh, Rogue One. They ripped that off. And it looked good. I'm not saying it didn't look good. That's where we actually introduced to Balin and um, and Shin. And you see Balin using the force and everything like that. Ripto on Ray Stevenson, by the way. And they actually do um, dedicate the first episode, it says, to our friend Ray. Since uh, Ray Stevenson actually uh, passed away. Now, Sabine and Ahsoka. Sabine was the apprentice, the Jedi apprentice of Ahsoka. That is confirmed in the show. And it looks like um, Ahsoka ran away from Sabine, you know, kind of like she ran away from uh, from Anakin. And they mentioned Anakin briefly, you know, when she says um, Anakin didn't complete my training. I left him, that kind of thing. But apparently, man, it's not really clear if Sabine really can use the force. She can use a lightsaber because she actually uses Ezra's lightsaber to fight Shin in the first episode. And boy, I got a major problem with what went down during that fight. They're fighting and Sabine is not very good. I believe she's not very talented because the droid from um 
Uh, the Clone Wars is there that um, helps the uh, younglings with the lightsabers. He even says he's in his um, show and he even says um, that um, Sabine, not very uh, talented with the force. It was kind of unclear. So I was thinking like, OK, maybe she's just a tad bit force sensitive, but really can't wield the force. And apparently, you know, she's been pretty rusty with that lightsaber because she gets her ass kicked by Shin. And then, guys, she gets impaled by the lightsaber. That is the way the first episode ends. And you know what? She's perfectly OK. I'm like, my goodness, man. Why is it that they did that? That really did piss me off right there. She should have been dead. I mean, why would you even do that? They had to know that people were going to be pissed off about that because she survived easily. I mean, it's just like Reva. Reva in um in the Obi Wan show as youngling stabbed by Vader, she's fine. Then later on as an Inquisitor stabbed by Vader, she's fine. But Qui Gon Jinn impaled in the same spot as as uh, Darth Maul. Darth Maul impaled him. He's dead. He's dead. Also, you know, in the sequel trilogy, Kylo Ren stabbed by Ray. Then Ray heals him. It really, really does undermine what happened to Qui-Gon in the Phantom Menace. I did not like that at all. I didn't like it. It was really, really annoying to me. But this is Disney Star Wars right here. Apparently, anybody can survive being impaled unless your name is Qui-Gon Jinn. And I understand why Qui-Gon had to die in the um, in the prequels, because I don't believe that um, Anakin is turning to the dark side. If Qui-Gon was his master, Obi-Wan wasn't ready. At all. Obi-Wan wasn't ready to be his master. Actually, Obi-Wan didn't want him. Remember, the guy that wanted him died. And I believe that's what actually led Anakin down the dark path. Now, I do believe we're actually going to see um, Anakin in this. And by the way, uh, Morgan, um, what's the name? Mor- Morgan Elson or something like that. Though the one that was actually in uh, Mandalorian. And she was um, fighting Ahsoka. She is a night sister. She is a witch of Dathomir. That was actually confirmed. So. Right now, I'm going to give the first two episodes on a scale of. um, On a scale of one to ten. Now that I'm thinking about it. I want to be fair. It was good. It wasn't great. It had problems. The impalement of Sabine took me out of it right there. I was like, man, that's ho- horrible. Should have been dead. And um, Sabine and um and Ahsoka do not get along. They don't get along. Apparently, they haven't talked to each other in a while either. So, But I'm going to give first episode definitely better. I'm going to give. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to give the first two episodes. I'm going to give it a um, 6.2 out of 10. It was okay, And I do believe that you need to watch Rebels to actually really, really understand this. Because if you go in cold, you're going to be like, who is Ezra? Who is Thrawn? Because Thrawn is not in it. You hear his name in the first two episodes. Ezra only is hologram. You're like, okay. What did he do? Because he talk about he talks about his sacrifice on the, on the hologram. You're going to be confused. I think overall you should watch Rebels. Do you need to? That's kind of questionable right there. But that's just my thoughts on this. What do you guys think of this? Matrix and Roadshow fans. Let us know what you think about all this in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you next time. 